This is Bukaleba Forest Reserve, a 9,000 hectare national gazetted forest on the shores of Lake Victoria in Mayuge District, southeastern Uganda. Today, it is the site of a long standing land battle between local communities who have lived there for generations and forest authorities who claim they never had any right to the land. A Norwegian timber company, Busoga Forestry Company, is planting 6,300 hectares of the forest with pine and eucalyptus trees that are sold mainly to the national electricity provider Umeme as electrical poles. The company coexists with four villages within the reserve that have a total population of 7,500 people. For decades, these people grew crops in the forest to sustain themselves in agroforestry systems. But when the government leased the forest land to the timber company in 1996, about 830 families were evicted from about 360 hectares of land, according to the National Association of Professional Environmentalists. Now, most of these communities are trapped between the lakeshore and the forest without a sustainable means of livelihood or access to the outside world. They say losing the land they depended on for survival has pushed them into extreme poverty, from which they have never managed to recover. They live one day at a time. Many of these people had originally come to the forest in the 1970s to work on a government beef farm and center fighting sleeping sickness. Others came later, escaping warfare in northern Uganda. The National Forestry Authority claims they never had any right to the land, and thus they are landless encroachers. But complex land laws in Uganda do give some rights to people who settled on land 12 years before the 1995 constitution came into place. After years of conflict between the communities and the forest authorities, President Museveni gave the villages a 500 hectare piece of land cut out from the forest to be used for community activities. But today, it is dominated by one community, Nakalanga, and the other villages say they are unable to get a share. According to the National Forestry Authority, the communities are cultivating illegally within this area. The communities are only allowed to use forest land for planting and selling trees, which NFA says can help them gain a much more sustainable income. So NFA is, is not here to, um, you know, um, to make anyone suffer in the process. We are here to make things better and, and we can't do it on our own. We need the support of every stakeholder. So my plea to the communities is that we do the right thing. If you know you are settled in a central forestry that is reserved illegally, come and rectify this issue. Come and formalize. Come and sit down with NFA and see how best we can work together. There are many opportunities within um, the central forest reserves, especially for communities. For every forest, NFA gives 5% of that forest to the community. But you see, this is where they get it wrong. We give you the 5% of this forest to the community for tree planting. Tree planting is a lucrative business. Um, and many times we encourage these uh, communities to plant fast growing trees, which they can grow and then sell and make money out of to improve their livelihoods. But living a life just trying to get the next meal for their families, the communities say they have been unable to plant trees. 
Busoga Forestry Company says it is fighting climate change along with providing money and timber resources to the Ugandan economy. The company is accredited under the International Verified Carbon Standard and sells carbon credits to the Swedish energy agencies. Carbon credits measure the amount of carbon taken in from the atmosphere by the trees, which helps reduce climate change. We have 325,000 tons registered with the UNFCC, and that will be coming on the market within the next month. And uh, we do have a contract with the Swedish energy agency, SIA, and they are, will purchase that from us um, with the intention of um, utilizing it along the contract period. I think it's, uh, it's at least a five-year period. And uh, this income is then shared uh, with the uh, communities around our plantations. 10% of the income at least is spent on these um, operations. On the international scale, these climate finance projects have been promoted as a win-win solution to help develop local communities in the Global South while saving the environment. But the reality is often far different. Uh, so climate financing right now is, one, is seen as one of the main mechanisms to combat uh, climate change. Um, so there's a lot of money going into climate financing because it's seen as an opportunity for industrialized countries to uh, meet their Kyoto obligations. Um, and with climate financing, they um, invest in countries in the developing world, basically, to help them um, introduce cleaner um, technologies, but, but for instance, also to reforest uh, degraded land uh, to make sure that there's less um, greenhouse gas emissions. So we did research uh, in Ethiopia, amongst others, and in Ethiopia you see uh, that uh, projects are um, presented as a success, that they're very successful in terms of uh, reforestation or stopping deforestation. Um, uh, so there are the projects from a nature uh, conservation perspective, they are quite successful and they managed to indeed um, um, stop deforestation. However, what you see is that that land and those, those forests, they uh, are used by mainly smaller farmers for their subsistence. So they rely on those forests for uh, grazing their cattle, for um, collecting um, wild honey, but also for instance for fuel wood, etc. And now those people don't have access to that land anymore. They're not longer allowed to use the land anymore. Uh, and some of them actually are chased off the land. The land used to be theirs, uh, and they are illegally dispossessed from the land. Um, while in the meantime, they need to buy their fodder for their cattle on the market. They need to buy charcoal on the market. So their costs have increased considerable. So if you're planting trees to be cut, then you are doing deforestation. Actually, it's better you don't plant because the reason we have climate change is because we cut trees. So if we are still planting and cutting, we are not doing anything. Those particular species of trees are consumers of water, farmers know. They consume a lot of water. So besides being hungry for food, because we do not have any more land to grow food, we are going still to starve for water. So this country is going no more to be the part of Africa, but a desert, because there will be not enough water for all these calyptus and pine trees that we are planting. So, Under its international standards, Busoga Forestry Company is mandated to invest 10% of revenue from its carbon sales into the local communities. This year, it will sell about 65,000 tons of carbon from Bukaleba Forest alone. Assuming a carbon credit costs about 13 U.S. dollars, this means about 84,500 U.S. dollars should be spent on the villages around. The company has invested far more. Last year, the company spent about 150,000 U.S. dollars on community development activities, and this year it plans to spend 250,000 dollars. We supply water through the drilling of boreholes uh, in selected areas. Um, we provide uh, to, as part of food security, we provide uh, improved seed and um, germination material for the crops that are grown in the areas. We also supply uh, uh, extension offices uh, from the university, local universities on improved agricultural methods. Um, the schooling in the area is provided with wood and timber for requirements on their site as has been needed. We supply the uh, also police posts and other administrative operations with 
timber for their expansion or repairs in the area. Um, we have trained people on improved cooking methods to reduce the amount of charcoal used in their in their operations. The area has been was granted to us on the condition that we planted trees, that uh, no other cropping was allowed on the operations, no cattle grazing was allowed, no people were allowed to live on the operation, no permanent structures were allowed to be built on the operation. And we have complied with all of that from our side. We have not been responsible for any movement of people off the land. But some promises have gone unfulfilled. A 2011 agreement stipulated that the company would mobilize resources for community income generation projects and demarcate a community tree growing zone near each village. The agreement also promised to move other smaller settlements such as Bukaleba and Walumbe into the larger Nakalanga village. As of July 2019, none of the other settlements had been moved into Nakalanga, leaving them unable to access the community land. There was further no evidence or discussion of such a community tree growing zone around the four villages. The company says it employs about 1,000 Ugandans, including hundreds from the communities. The company's 2016 Environment and Social Impact Report claimed they were paid a monthly minimum wage of 205,000 Uganda shillings. But the village chairman said the workers are actually paid 60,000 shillings, about 16 U.S. dollars a month. Visiting the communities, the residents said they had not benefited from BFC's projects. <laughs> So after planting their trees, they planted their trees to, in our gardens where we were cultivating from and uh, we expect maybe something else to change our lives, like an, like an activity to do. And uh, they held any, the workshop, the seminar, to teach us how we can change our activity from cultivation to a different type of work. And uh, they told us, they mobilized us to create CBOs the forestry organization is uh, and we greeted them we greeted them they told us we are going they are going to give us the bfc was going to give us uh, they promised to give us the startup capital startup capital uh, but at the end they gave us the only certificates they told us to they trained us to uh, to rear uh, chicken they trained us to to change the activities from the cultivation to other different but up to now since 2013 up to now, there's nothing being done. We do request the government to come in and give us, and we share the community land, the 500 hectares which they give the people of Nakalan. And we do also enjoy benefit from that. Apart from that, we are actually badly off. We are only fishing, and they fishing. Uh, the army men came in. If they find you with the illegal gears, they cane you, they take you to prison. So we are badly off. Uh, the legal Fishing gears, we cannot afford to, to buy them because it is, it is in a thousand, say, ten thousand of money. Yet we don't have money. We don't have startup. So we call up the government to come and help us and give us the change, the startup. If they limit us to cultivate, let them give us the loans of fishing gears of the nets and we buy the nets which they need. It's, that, it's what we can do best because we have nowhere to go. We are born here. We, we were raised here, so we have no For survival, Wallumbe residents have taken to growing crops illegally within the 200-meter buffer zone between the lakeshore and the forest. Since April, the National Environment Management Authority has started demarcating this zone, which is important to conserve the environment and ecosystem of this enormous lake, crucial to the economies of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. But this means that the Walumbe community that lives within the buffer zone will most likely be made to leave. So that process started a long time ago, and in the buffer zone, of course, there are families, there are crops, there are land, there are property, and so the process of uh, demarcation of the 200 meters started, and the families that will be affected will be one of those that will be attended to when the process is concluded. The people who are encroaching the Bukaleba Central Forest Reserve cannot be resettled by NFA. And our reason is very simple. Our mandate 
is to manage the central forest reserves in a sustainable basis to supply quality forest products um, and services to government, to local communities and the private sector. On resettlement, that is honestly outside the mandate of NFA. Instead, the government body urged the locals to formalize and approach NFA to create community forest management agreement to access other benefits. This means that communities would have to agree to stop growing crops in the forest. We have also done quite a lot for other communities at Mavida. There are some communities there that have signed MOUs with NFA. They are recognized groups under the CFM arrangement. They are doing poultry farming. We have quite a number of partners uh, who give them the cheeks. They give them the money to start this business. And of course, they're given technical advice. We also provide them uh, beehives. We train them in beekeeping. So what we're trying to say is, when NFA gives you this land, the 5%, it is, it is not necessarily for, uh, for, for growing of crops because when you grow these crops, you're degrading the area. Living between the forest plantation, the lake, and the wetlands critical for environmental conservation, the people of Bukaleba Forest live in a delicate balance of competing interests. Unfortunately, it impacts on their livelihoods, on their day-to-day -day survival. One of their biggest challenges is their isolation. In Namugongo village, residents complain of the lack of a road to connect them to hospitals, schools, and markets. But if NFA allowed such a road to be built, fragile wetland ecosystems as well as the forest would be harmed. <laughs> For now, though landless, the communities still survive. They hope for a better future. For InfoNile, this is Annika McGuinness.